I'd like to call this finance committee meeting to order. The first item is assignment for request for council action. For the finance committee, we have 1778 budget amendments, 1779 amending codified ordinance 13301 association memberships, 1780 bids 2017 concrete pavement joint ceiling program, 1781 bids 2017 concrete street repair program, 1782 expenditure over 15,000 for Ron Pfaff Electric Engineering. 1783 adopt OPBA sergeant's contract. 1784 adopt OPBA controlman's contract. 1785 adopt OPBA communication and operator's contract. 1786 adopt teamsters contract. 1787 amending salaries and benefit code sections 3103, 3113, and 3116. 1788 cooperative purchase new 2013 freight line M2 back all streets department. 1789 concrete bids purchase 2008. Oh, wait, I did that. Oh, another one. 2018. He's got a lot of them going. Uh, Freightliner dump truck water department. 1791 discussion ordinance barring medical marijuana in the city of Medina. And for the streets and sidewalks committee, we have one item. 17090 adopt annual street curb installation program. We have 17037 various text amendments to the Planning and Zoning Code, uh, sections 114713, 114716, 115501, 113513, C1. These are recommendations from the Special Legislation Committee. And this came, so Bill, you want to start us off? Uh, came out of your committee? Yeah, sure. They were, um, it, it came out with, a, and there was one other that came out with this that we didn't pass. And these were, were relatively, uh, these are really kind of clean up ordinances, as Jonathan, I think, described, Jonathan described to us that he was trying to clean up different elements of, uh, particular elements of the code. And um, we um, didn't pass the, the change of the 5,000 square feet in the historic district, but the others that we have on here tonight, we did, we did recommend that they were, they, we, we felt that they were reasonable and, and did did not um, really change the intention of anything that had been um, in the original code, but really was a clarification and, a, and an update of it. Okay. Jonathan? Uh, I, yeah, as, as uh, Bill said, um, the uh, cleanup ones uh, were 1147.13, 1147.16, 1135.13 C1. Um, I did for 1155.01, which was a uh, Less, not really, there's some cleanup, but there was a, uh, you know, change of, of uh, uh, regulation of fencing to allow for a little more flexibility for corner lots in terms of uh, uh, fencing in more of a contiguous rear yard within a fenced area with a more typical six foot fence is, is a fairly typical uh, uh, type of fence construction in a lot of communities. Um, and as Bill said, the uh, 5,000 square foot maximum building footprint in the uh, public square area of the city <coughs> zoning district did not pass by the, the legislation committee. Uh, so just to ask that the finance committee pass along the four that did make it make it through special legislation to go in so we can get those codified as soon as possible. Or at least go to city council for discussion on that. Questions? We vote on these all one, all one group or in uh, they're all submitted as one group. Are you okay with that? I was just going to say, as the committee of the, or the special legislation, we voted on each one individually. Um, I mean, just my thoughts. I mean, I've been here a long time, and I remember going through with McKenna and Associates, and we went through a lot of these things and uh, put them in here for a reason. Um, a few of them regarding the fence, I'm not in favor of that change and I'm not in favor of the change regarding the 15% um, being used of alternative materials. I think they can come to a variance and get a variance if they want to change it. And I know we go through the Historic Preservation Board and the, and the Planning Commission, but again, I don't want to have any unintended consequences and it seems to be working fine the way they are uh, with the variances. So I'm more apt to uh, keep it from what we know and try, and try to open a door for things we don't know. So that's just my opinion. Can I just comment on the alternative material? Sure. You know, I, I've been here a long time too. Um, but a lot of things in, in, that apply in, in the historic district, it, it, they're reproduced with, they're not made out of wood. And mm -hmm. so the alternative material actually, when it goes up, 
it's in, in most cases nowadays it's better it'll last longer and in some cases it's really the only alternative um, and, but you can't tell the diff you cannot tell the difference between that material and and the wood and the fence which I was a bit on the fence about the fence one <laughs> myself but if you think about if you think about if 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 we live where our backyard is our backyard and we don't live on a corner, this is never an issue. But it, for the folks who do live on corners, their backyard <coughs> is really a front yard. And so the way Jonathan configured the height and the distance from the sidewalk where the fence could go, it actually allows folks whose backyard, because of the corner, is a front yard to move the fence out have a reasonable height and protect the vision. They have a backyard that isn't looking out on the street. So if they have a you know kids a playground, a cookout, or whatever, they can have that area that most of us take for granted because we have a back we have a backyard. And if you look at the number of people that would be affected by it, it seemed like it seemed like to me anyway on the committee it's, it seemed like a pretty reasonable. Um, um, reasonable area to make and we could make an improvement that would help people you know get better use out of their yard I think I was just pointing out too. what I really appreciate Jonathan brought us the zoning map and then he brought us some visuals of some of these situations of 15% alternative materials he brought us some uh, corner <coughs> maps where he showed us what the uh, fence would look like and that really helped and helped us understood why these changes make sense so I think that's why we felt pretty good about it well I mean I watched the movie I watched the uh, the committee meeting too and I guess you know I understand what you're saying but again if somebody in a corner lot you first of all you, when you buy a corner lot you know what you're buying uh, and the second thing is that uh, if you wanted to fence in uh, the yard more than is per currently permitted you know people will get a, a variance and there was a an agreement reached at least on one I heard of a four foot fence rather than a six foot I just think that uh, from an aesthetic standpoint it's it's more aesthetic if a corner lot maintains the way we currently have it and I understand the backyard issue and I purchased a corner lot when I first moved into the city and I didn't have a problem. I put a little three foot fence up at the back of the house. I still had a little area that the kids played in and it was fine. It worked out fine. I, mean, I, I don't know. I, there's reasons why we have these in the zoning code and, the, and I remember these reasons going through all of these things 15 years ago or maybe longer that we, we went through everything and talked about uh, many of these items. And I do understand that materials change, but if materials change and it's like a, a material that <coughs> provides the same look, um, depending on the project in the historic district or whatever, it'll be approved that way. And a variance would be granted um, because the hardship of the material changing, there's a, there's a better way to do it. So I just look at it from a different perspective. And it's, you know, not to say that you guys aren't, I mean, you guys viewed it from your perspective. That's fine. You know, I agree with you. With in regards to the fence. I do live on the corner lot and I'm trying to envision a six foot fence, 15 <coughs> foot on the sidewalk. And I, I worry about the aesthetics. I, I worry you're gonna choke down a neighborhood street because it could be fence lines. And some of the pictures we show, that's not everywhere now. And I, I feel more comfortable. The compromise I didn't know about, about the four foot, I, I thought three foot was, uh, to me, good, uh, a good number that we've had and I'd like to keep it that way. And, John, if, it, if this came out of committee, then the folks that like Councilman Rose brought up, they're coming out individually. Can we? I guess we could put it on Council floor individually if you wanted to do that. Well, I mean, if we're going to. I mean, if there's only going to be two of us that are going to be against vote, it, it doesn't really matter. Well, that, that, I mean, if I'm going to vote in the bulk vote, I'm going to vote no because I don't agree. Well, I think you and I would be the only no votes, and that don't know if it really matters. That would still pass. Yeah, so everybody else is okay with it. So okay. you, it's nothing matter. Sure. All right. Since it went through committee, yeah. Yeah. Anything? Any other questions? I'll make a motion to accept the recommendations from both the special legislation committee on the four text amendments. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. Motion carries. Uh, okay, 17047 West Liberty Parking Structure Preliminary Budget Discussions. Patrick, you got an update for us? Uh, last time we discussed it, we talked about uh, getting a surveyor. We have a surveyor on board to split off uh, 
what they're going to have to do is, is merge the, the whole city hall parcel and the parking lot that we own and the, the Sonic. It's like, I think, seven or eight different parcels over the years of this, what it is. They're going to have to merge it and then create four new, we, we're recommending four new lots. One being the front end down West Liberty that we talked about selling or leasing. One being the footprint for the parking deck. Uh, second being City Hall, adjacent to City Hall. That, that, that's the third. And the fourth would be the area uh, fronting um, Elmwood. Uh, that could potentially be another lease or sale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're on board. That should be done shortly. Uh, after that, we're ready for the next move, I guess. Okay, Kimberly, welcome. Uh, yeah, a quick update on the, um, I guess, what's the most important part of this puzzle, piece of this puzzle, is the TIF. Uh, is there any general update on that and the timing of it? Well, we have the draft of, uh, of the feasibility study, which looks like with this partnering with the schools that we could receive over 30 years with 50 50 split on the uh, property tax revenues that we would have. A, Enough to cover the cost for our internal loan. Um, With the project is currently discussed, not including across the street, or, or it doesn't. So this would be the North Liberty project that's on the city-owned property, and then Dr. Raymond's project. So those two combined. Pays and off our loan in 30 years. 30 years. At a 50-50 split, did you say, or what was it? Yeah, 50%, yeah. yeah. So splitting that, so the schools, would be taking a hit, but they would still be getting half of what they would if there was no. They get they get money if it didn't happen. They get zero. Right. right. If they didn't happen. They would get zero. Right. But with the development, they, they get fifty percent. Fifty percent. Yeah. So. Um, so we just you know. So that sounds promising. Without any other development, it's going to pay yes, for itself. Yes, yeah. So anything that happens across the street, exactly. that south, what we call refer to as the South Liberty Project, that would be a bonus. Okay. But we don't control those properties. We just set the small ones. So. And it doesn't include, because we didn't decide yet, the little parcel on Elmwood. If that was constructed, that would be extra too? Well, we would have to talk about that because... Um, if that's going to be a city project where it would be exempt from property tax or if, we're, if that's going to be a private development. Oh, we so. don't really know what that's going to be. I think the thought was, the thought process was let's try to focus on the Liberty Street project first, see how that goes, and then determine what the need is over there on Elmwood. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if it goes, if that's a private project though, then that's a potential for additional revenue. And so the more projects that happen within it, we can lower the 30 years, of course, because it'd be the payback period. I'll keep shrinking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Bye. so far, the preliminary results look good. Mark? Yeah, that worked out perfect there. I'm, I'm uh, still struggling with, and uh, I love your message. Um, I left your message today. I'm trying to figure out um, without the development, just surface area, what is our number of parking spaces? I pulled out. We did this a year and a half ago or so. If we were to just build the maximum number of spaces on you know, where the temple was now, maintain our existing lot, uh, we could get between City Hall lot, uh, the existing lot over there, and the new lot, we're about 151 spaces. And then the decks. That's Jam packed, you know, that's still landscaping, no setbacks. That's basically a sea asphalt. Okay. And that's no development of the of the right. up front parcel and on the side parcel. Yeah, no selling, no leasing. So what would that be if you did those? How much parking can you get in without doing a deck? Without without the parcel on Liberty and without the parcel on Elmwood. The parcel on uh, Elmwood would take knock off about twenty spots from that. The Liberty one to be honest with you, I didn't didn't look into it, but we probably estimate another twenty. Least, Forty left. Probably right around there, yeah. You know, and I'm still I'm still struggling with it. Um, I think uh, personally it's a, a a lot of money that I don't think it's gonna be you know, thirty years is a great number if everything works out. Uh, a great number for you, but everything works out that the TIF comes into play and maybe we get future uh, tenants or future development on the original block we talked about, you know, but when you're talking about a three and a half million dollar project, 
the cost for a surface lot half a million dollars? Oh, not even that much. Right? Probably around two hundred thousand or so. <clears throat> and I'm trying to justify, or because we're going to have to use a lot of our money that we really don't have that much anymore, and it's not being replenished. I don't think because our coffers aren't being replenished as well they, as they have in the past, and I'm struggling with it. I mean, I'm all about trying to have development up here, and I, I know I've been told I don't see the vision. Well, I do, and I think we, you know, we're under pressure, too, because of the million-dollar grant from the state. And I think we applied for it a little too early myself, and I appreciate all the effort that went in with it, our state reps. But I don't think we had our ducks in a row when, on that to really go out and get, and I could be wrong, um, but to really go out and still focus on that bigger prize, which was um, the lot where the moose is and that one we already talked about there. So I'm still struggling with it to, to justify two and a half million dollars from us, uh, a million dollars from the state, which is still the taxpayer money. And I'm, I'm, I'm having a struggle with it. So I'm just. Anything else? I'm still exactly where I was before, and I, I appreciate what you're saying, Mark, but I, I think that we have an opportunity to do something that will change, um, change the dynamic of the downtown <coughs> way, way beyond when we're, we'll be long gone. And I think that this opportunity with what Kimberly's put together, with what the administration's put together, and with that grant, and the uh, ability to bring that kind of housing in close to the square and expand the retail, um, the retail base at the same time, with a payback, with with a payback over over three decades, shortened by further development that almost certainly will come, you know, across the street. You you face, I think, what everything faces. You know, either you change, adapt, or, or die. And this is a chance for us to adapt an area that if we were to surface park it, put in surface parking, we'd have a lot of parking. And we would have a lot of parking. And if you look at cities like um, like Barberton, who every time they thought they needed to do something, they tore something down and put surface parking in. And then they tore something down and put surface. They have a lot of surface parking now. But you can play soccer on the main street in Barberton. And you can probably get through the entire game. And you never have to pause for a car coming by. And, and while it is a lot of money, I think that that vision thing um, is, is, a, is a pretty solid concept that, that, that 20, 30 years down the road, folks are going to look back and say, yeah, there was some risk in it, I suppose, but it was a pretty small risk, and it paid off big time. Mr. President, uh, to go along with that, and I do respect your, uh, your, your opinions there, Mark, because uh, that is a lot of money, uh, and we have to make sure we spend it wisely. But uh, the last time we discussed this, I did a real quick calculation with the potential uh, income tax we can derive just on the people who potentially could move into the apartments. And we're looking at approximately $50,000 a year in additional income tax alone, just from that. Okay, so with the building of this parking lot, with the additional development that we anticipate to go with this, it's something that is going to continue to grow. Okay, if uh, I've had people come up to me and say, Medina is a great place to come to when we have a, uh, an activity such as the uh, light up night, things like that, there's no place to park. All right, that's one of the biggest complaints I have. Uh, and if we want to continue this to grow, if we want to continue uh, our uh, forward motion with this, uh, I think this is a, a, a well placed uh, dollar spend. To uh, you know, like the old the movie said, build it and they will come. All right, we, we with the additional living quarters that could be there, the potential with the, the items that have been discussed potentially to move into the other areas. It, it, it's a good investment. This is not nothing that will, in, in my view, and with everything that I've been told and everything I've researched, uh, will go badly on us in the long term. I have to agree with uh, Mills. I'm not going to elaborate much. It's just, uh, and I do respect your opinion, Mark. Uh, when I talk, when I think of surface parking, I, I just, uh, and I see it sometimes. We Kmart parking lot. You know, there's there's a lot of surface parking there, and it, it's uh, a lot of place for Kmart birds. Right. <laughs> I I just I I like the vision that all of us, including you, Mark, that, that have come up 
your your report focused on the uh, uh, South Liberty project, which I think if we if we do complete the North Liberty Street project, the South Liberty project will will come to fruition. Uh, I, I just think it's such a huge opportu opportunity, and, and uh, uh, I, I support my my stance that was initially to go along with with the uh, the vision that we've collectively. Uh, and, and it, it, you're right, it's a gamble. And you're right, it is tax dollars, whether it's coming from the state. Uh, and we are responsible for those tax dollars. But I, I, in my heart of hearts, I think that we would be spending this wisely to move forward on this. Uh, and like I said, nothing's guaranteed 100%. You know, there, something horrible could happen. And something horrible could happen if there's just a surface parking lot there, too. So uh, I'm, I'm in favor of, of the uh, vision that we have. Anything else we I, I agree. I just think it's too good of an opportunity to pass on right now. Well, we need more information, I guess, from Kimberly on the TIF. Um, so, because that's the first thing that would have to happen, I would imagine. And then um, with uh, Patrick, more of a, uh, I mean, I guess you've given us a preliminary budget thus far that I've seen of 3.5 million right around there. Um, and I don't know if that includes what, what the redesign the parking deck that I saw before was still 20 feet away from the building. I don't know if that includes going all the way to the building so we maximize parking. I, I, I don't know if it did. I mean, it gives you another 16 more spaces, I think. But we, we can, I don't know that how much that changes the cost or not. Can't imagine it's going to be very much. And, and then, Kimberly, we, whenever the TIF is ready, I think that's the next thing we need to discuss because we need to. I think before committing any money, knowing that that's going to be in place right. to capture the cost. <coughs> I think that's our concern and council, what I heard. Well, and we're going to work with the schools to make sure that, and ideally we'd like to work with them simultaneously. So as we work through our council processes that they work uh, through their process. they're working through their school board Correct. processes. So Brian Cooper, uh, they'll, they'll probably have him come and present to the school board like they did for council on, you know, what it is and how it works and, you know, the, sort of the nuts and bolts of it. So, um, do you think that there's what a... What we'll need to do is, I got several quotes from legal firms that do this kind of work. I have one more that I need to call. Mr. Huber asked me to call to get a quote on the actual TIF legislation. So that would be, I think, another next step is actually working with a legal firm that does economic development tools to put that TIF legislation together. And then also a company that has the ability to do developer agreements, because if we're going to either sell off that parcel or if we're going to lease that land lease that parcel, we need to know what that's going to look like in our RFP that we put out there, which I'm assuming we will probably want to do that. Do you think it did, should, or do you think we should have or not have another joint meeting with the school board to, to finalize this, or do you think they want to do it separately? Do they want to meet with us again? Um, I think they will want to meet with us again and possibly do another joint meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's keep this is after the tip presentation that they received? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think Brian will be speaking to them sometime in June. But the other thing I just wanted to mention to council, since we're on the to topic of the downtown strategic plan and the parking deck and stuff, I had a phone call from a counterpart in Southern Ohio, it's a city outside of Dayton, who is looking to hire OHM Advisors, which is the company that we use for our downtown uh, development plan. Wanted to know what our experience was with that. They have an old paper mill that the, that the city acquired and they're trying to redevelop it. They're trying to redevelop that paper mill to look like our square, to be like our downtown with that walking and all that stuff. So other cities in other parts of the state are looking at what we're doing and saying, hey, that's a model. How can we recreate that? Like they can't even recreate it, right? So they're trying to recreate it and they're calling us to say, what was your experience with OHM advisors? So I you know, give them all that feedback and it's, forget the name of the city, but they're outside of Dayton somewhere, down at the Mike Mountain. Is there a West Carrollton or West, something like that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's just um, a little tidbit. And then I don't know if, um, <coughs> 
Uh, yes, so the other thing is um, in order to fill out the forms for the state, we do need council to appropriate the 2.5 million. We need to give them a copy of the budget and either an ordinance or resolution um, with, with that information in it. So, um, what is the timing on that? So, when I talked to the Ohio Construction Facility Commission, they have to have all of their paperwork in by June of 2018, which means we have to have all of our paperwork and documentation to them no later than March. But I would not recommend that we wait till March. Like, we need to get all of these things teed up now, like this year, mm -hmm. so that Patrick can put together the design and the uh, bid packages and all of those Well, it sounds things. like once we figure out this TIF, yes. would, would give us comfort to know that there's something in place to generate money back to us. Um, I don't think anybody here wants to give two and a half million dollars with nothing coming back. Uh, that's a little too much of a stretch. And the other thing that the state said, I don't know if Patrick talked to this to this point, but the way I understand it, the million dollars we can, as we are going through the project and building the deck, we can bill them. Is it monthly or quarterly? Oh, it's a it's a percentage. It's like so, a percentage so the one million yes. and the two and a half million, whatever percentage yes. those are. It's too late for me to do math right now. But you for argument's sake, it's a yeah. third. Yeah. When we do the design, we they'll third. pay a third of it. Right. When right. we do uh, construction, they'll pay a third of it, just okay. on down the line. So we don't have to wait till the end and then show them all the all yes. the invoices. Yes. Which so I, which was good news. Yeah, so I think that's a benefit that there's like this sort of drawdown mechanism with the state. And then the other thing is we did reach out to the State Historic Preservation Office because the Construction Facility Commission said, hey, you need to talk to these people. The lady came up, she met with myself, Patrick, Jonathan. She did a field study and um, we just need to give her a couple things about the Masonic Temple and I was going to ask, ask Councilman Lamb if he had an extra copy of that CD. She wanted a copy of that for her files. Price is going up. <laughs> I know, right? Charger double. But anyway, um, so basically what she, once we check those couple little things off the list, then she'll write a, a report to the Ohio Construction Facility Commission letting them know that this project's <coughs> good to go on their end from a historic perspective. Uh, we did a lot of research on graveyards and cemeteries because that's a little bit of a rub for the historic office, but there's no graveyards or cemeteries, so it's not and, and the other thing is, my understanding, at least if the deck is not constructed until 18, if we get the TIF in place in 17, we will, as, a, as effective as of January 1st, 2000, because of the tax rolls, we would start getting money in simultaneously with the construction. I would imagine, because if, if the uh, Manana so chamber the parcel value is- So the value as they're building it, right. you mean? Mm -hmm. um, because it's six months in arrears, so first yeah. bill would come in, so that would be good if we could do that. Just, then it would be simultaneous, we wouldn't have to wait another year in order to start getting money paid back. It'd be getting paid back immediately, at least on a portion of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Anything else? Sounds good. Okay, well, keep us informed. Um, 1768, elected official salary, if you recall, we had a presentation um, by a few members of the Charter Review Committee last meeting, talking about what to do. Did anybody have time to think about a little bit, or any thoughts, or? Ideas or I like the recommendation. But, you know, do you think that I, I do agree with? with uh, I think it was Mark that brought up uh, that we should stay instead of their their recommendation of three percent. We should stay consistent with their our uh, new contracts and, and what we would we the changes you mean the changes yes thank you. So, what I guess the question would be. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Huber, I think we could do it as long as we tie it to something. The salary is tied to a specific mechanism that changes it, or do we have to have a specific number each year? I guess that was, I can't remember if that. Yeah, what you've done in the past is you've, you've given me a percentage and then I've calculated it and you voted on, on the, number. the number. And I've asked you before, this isn't related to that, but to make it 
council is paid once a month, so make it evenly divisible by 12. Right. And then the, the other two are paid uh, each pay period, so evenly divisible by 26 or 27, depending on the year. So I guess what we have to decide, too, is do we make it effective as elections come up, or do we make it effective all at once? Which, as elections come up, would it be effective in 2018 for three, who's up? One, three, three of you, or wait to 2020 and it's elect, uh, effective for all seven at once? I kind of know what the, the three want to do. <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean, that's another question. But I think, I think you're right. I don't know if we could do it by percentage. If you want to do 2% instead of three, you just go back, redo the numbers by 2%, and then you can calculate it that way. And maybe that's fair, because if we're lower, fine. I don't think anybody cares. Right. Um, right. The goal is just to get in line with the surrounding communities and give more incentive I guess for people to run would be another day. I think keep in mind that their recommendation was so that you would get one year of credit. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're the lowest point. Yes. So just keep that in mind. So right. if you go lower than the three percent, you mm -hmm. won't be at that one year credit. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the I can't. I don't have it in front of me. Do I have it in front of me? Oh, here it is. We do. Um, to get the credit would be six hundred thirty bucks. Is that right? Per month. Yeah, whatever their recommendation was. But then it goes, it, it changes each year based upon like a cost of living adjustment. Right, because they figured in how much the, the, um, They did it 3%, they just got Yeah, that it's going to be that much every year. So the credit is 630 minimum and 945 minimum to keep it commensurate with the pay differential, I guess you would call it, right? Yeah, well, not a, yes. But after that, I don't know, they just use 3%, I mean, I guess you could use 2%. I don't know if that really matters. Is that and I don't know if it really would make a difference in the bargaining in the future. Uh, Not for council paying. Well, well you know, we're sitting here saying, we're, you guys just gave council yourselves a 3% raise and now you're, you're asking Well, for true, bargaining. but we're still far below our... Oh, no, no, I get that. <laughs> if they want to be like that, but they're far below everybody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, I, I kind of agree with Mark on the perception there. Uh, so, I mean, we don't have to decide it today, but um, more to think about. You know, I didn't, uh, last time we talked about this, you know, we had a discussion about it, and somebody said, you know, that exactly what I think you said, maybe somebody would run, you know, be, if it was a little bit more money or whatever, but, you know, I, I actually don't agree with the, with the recommendation, truthfully, because, you know, if you look around, if you look at us, as just an example, I mean, would you, have, anybody on this council now have not run if the pay was $200 less? I, I, I doubt it, because everybody is, we've all said we're not doing it for the money. And so much about politics, because this is politics, is about money. And if somebody would run because they were going to get another $130 or $200 or whatever, I'm not sure that that's the motivator that we want. It concerns me though, that as long as I've been here active on council, I have not really, you know, and I'm not looking for, to have an opponent or for Denny to have an opponent, but it concerns me that you know, I don't see other folks, a lot of folks engaged kind of with what we're doing, that when one of us is not here, there's somebody who's, you know, who's going to come in and, and, and step in. You know, like John, you've been here a long time, Jim, you've been, you know. You guys have years here, and, and one thing that, that was clear to me um, was that this is kind of the board that you would never want to have term limits. You and I talked about it one time, because there is a pretty big, there is a pretty big learning curve. You know, I mean, city administration does about a thousand things a day, and for us to sit here every other week and, and catch up and determine financing for the administration, it's, it's quite a bit to think about. You know, and you, you don't want to get a you know one trick pony on city council, but I, I'd like to see people engaged with what we're doing in, in, in the city. But on the other hand, I don't want it to be based on money. And if it is, you know, if you're going to raise it to ten thousand dollars, I'm sure we could bring a whole lot of people out of the woodwork. But a couple hundred dollars either way, I think is is um, I'm I'm quite happy with going forward um, with what we have. And I'm reminded of that meeting that we had about the pool. When, when Macy Halley came and talked about the pool, 
that in the 50s there would be five people who got together to build a city pool and mortgage their house in order to finance the city pool. Well, you don't see that much, and you know, folks won't, you know, aren't going to do that anymore. But I, but I think that's kind of the heart and soul of you want you want from people that are in government that are willing to take the time that you know you guys take and and um, participate in, in what's important about the city without any financial consideration. Because I, I I'm pretty sure most of most all of us would probably be here if the pay was you know 20 bucks a meeting. Right. Um, so and I you know I understand what you're talking about 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 the retirement endeavor, but that's kind of my my position on it. Okay. Anything else? I just I, I agree with Bill. I've been here since the beginning for the service, but I'm not going to weigh in one way or another uh, on, on the wages. Uh, it's for me. I'm like Bill. I'm satisfied. But, uh, I'm not going to try to sway anybody one way or another on it. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> I mean, I get. Do we want to go forward with it? Do we want to change it? Or just leave it alone? I don't think it's as much for. I mean, it's, we're still going to have to go forward with the, the finance director and the mayor's position, and I don't think it's. And well, I, don't, I don't think they said to make any changes in us. I thought they said to, to make right. some a cost of living adjustments, like the right. two or three percent, yeah. whatever that was. Right. I. Uh, but again, you have to only do that. Again, I think we have to put those numbers in now. You have to right. You have to pick the number. You can't just say. You got to pick it now and say. If it's eighty thousand, if it's two percent more the next year, then right. it's but right. we have to do that. That's that's that. We have to address that. But I do agree with Bill. I'm, you know, I, I obviously didn't, you know, run run for election for for the money. But it it was nice to know that we were getting a month's credit right. uh, towards towards retirement, even as small as as you know. The fifty bucks a month you're going to get. When you're well, right. you know, I still <laughs> I, I, I still tell people <laughs> I want to do the first Oprah statement or last Oprah statement I got, because I never really even look at them, I, I opened it up and it said like eleven $1 hundred dollars. And I said, God, Phoebe, I said, eleven $1 hundred dollars, that's pretty good. Well, it's eleven $1 hundred dollars for a year if I did. <laughs> <laughs> so not obviously, but but the month the month uh, credit I think is is important, even though we may not utilize it, any of us may not utilize it as a, a full retirement or the health care benefits, but uh, for people that will want to, uh, like Bill said, do a com community service and run for election, uh, and if they get elected, I, I, I do think we sh should have the responsibility of setting up something so they can get you know, a month's credit for a month. All right, well, I think where, where it's heading is that whatever pay we have now, do a 2% increase for the, the mayor, the finance director, and it sounds like us, just to keep up with the cost of living and, and meet the, the criteria of the, of the credit. Because if, if you do that, really, you're not making any more money than you did the year before. Right. You're making the same amount. Right. Well, I wouldn't do the 2% unless it would. I mean, I'm more in favor of keeping up with the minimum. I don't care about a. Okay. Okay. So the, I mean, if, if we're not going to keep it at the minimum, then I don't see a big deal to raise it at all. Yeah, that's a good point. For council, anyhow. So, to be clear, you're, you're saying keep it at whatever PERS says uh, is the main minimum to earn a year's credit? Which is, I think, what it was originally set at years ago. A long time ago. And then it fell behind. We brought it up to date. Now it's falling behind again. Okay. And I think that's 630 a month. Is that right? I think that's what that is, right? we got to double check that. That's what they figured. That's what when I sent you on the original. Yeah, whatever their minimum recommendation was, that's what was needed to. Six thirty then. Yeah, six thirty this year, six sixty next year, and six ninety five. Well, no, I don't think the increase is established right now. Yes, because they already established. Oh, they already changed. I thought it was the, beyond that, for they two can, years. So wasn't it just two years? I think the things? first two was it, and then after that, they're yeah. So then the others are a shot in the dark because you're passing it for a four year. Right. And right, and the first year because they have a recommendation for 2017, but obviously you can't actually change 2017. Right. right. And you can only change 18 and 19 for three of the seven members. So by the time you get to where you're affecting all seven, it could change. You're guessing. Yeah. Right. That's why they did this to try to do it because the state's changing it by it was, a percentage. Right. It was that, but they were also pointing out that they were catching up for the fact that there hasn't been a council raise 
Because he explained that. I mean, this is a, a big raise as a percentage, but there hasn't been a raise since 2007 or 2008, so it's... Well, it seems to me the logical thing to do would be just do what you said. If, they're, if the state's going to change it by 2% a year anyways every year, then we would have to do that just to keep up with the state. If they're automatically going to change the, the amount to get a year credit. Because it sounds like they're going to change it every year going forward. Just to... Because they want to keep it changing with the cost of living, too. So that everybody has to keep moving up, otherwise you, you don't get a year's credit. That's what it sounds like is happening. They had frozen their wages for a while, but you never know where they're, you never know what the state's going to do. <laughs> I mean, we're, yeah, we're all guessing at that point. All right, well, Thursday. let's think about that a little bit more, but it sounds like maybe the, everybody in council just wants to keep it to whatever the state does as a minimum. Well, I'm not sure if everybody feels that way or not. <clears throat> I, I, I don't, but, oh, you know. Maybe you don't, okay. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good with that. And you're, you're with Bill. Uh, no, I, I was just doing a real quick math thing, but no, to, to keep it at the minimum so um, so you can earn a, a, a year's credit. I, I, well, I think that was the goal of, of, of anything, of anybody in public service. That, that, makes, sense. that makes sense. That makes sense. The well, only thing is that you have to be careful with certain people who are, are paying full Social Security now and paying into this. There, There's, there's going to be an impact somewhere on either the Social Security or this depending on how the numbers right. work out. Right. So even though you think you're going to get all of this and all of this, you're not. You don't. Right, you don't. Okay. They're <laughs> right. It's, they're, somebody's going to say, I won. <laughs> okay. So. That's true. All right. Well, let's. Does it sound like we're all in agreement on mayor and finance? We also do have to make those recommendations. Right. So what is our final? 2%? I think so. Well, see, the, I don't know. What I'm struggling <coughs> with is if we get down to contracts, and we can't give a raise, and we all already have something in place for fi or the finance director and the mayor or us, and we're getting raises and they're not. I just want to make see if there's something in there that <coughs> freezes if it's midstream. I don't, think I, I don't think you can do it. You either got to give it or not give it. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's a great question, but I just don't want to be getting a, a or the mayor and the finance director getting. Well, again, I don't think any of us are getting paid more, not even close, to, or maybe close to the average, but we're not there at the average. No, no, I understand that. But I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know how uh, the, the bargaining units can look at it and say, well, you guys are getting a raise. Okay, we're still way below the average. So if you guys want to be way well, below the average. I guess I'm not really worried about us, but, you know, the... Uh, I think they're below the average, too. Yeah. Right. Well, the most we could do, though, would be four years because then we've never yeah. gone past four years for the you can't go, Yeah, you can't go more than four right years. Here. No, I understand. I just, something happened midstream in that four year. And, and what we're talking about is that no, it'll only be two years, though. So it was the first year of 17. Because so, we have the three year contracts coming up, I hope. Um, <laughs> and it's a two and a half, two and a quarter, and two. So. <coughs> You know, there's a difference there, so. Right. There are more. They're going to be more to begin with, right off the bat. No, we do. All right, well, think about it a little bit more. we got to do this before the July meeting, so there's some more thoughts. Okay. Uh, just trying to get an update on 1769 parking over the sidewalks. We had a discussion about this last time. Um, I don't know if anybody thought about it anymore. Uh, we did. Uh, we do have a few issues in the city. Uh, on certain parking lots, I mean, par uh, driveways <coughs> that are really short, that are, you know, what do you do? Do you do anything? Do you, do you care? Do you just say, have less cars? Do you say, you want to try to solve the problem? I mean, that's kind of where we're at. I, uh, I'm not in favor of parking over the sidewalks. I mean, we already... Well, I don't think, I think that's an issue. That's not a choice. That's a choice. That's a state, that's well, a state law. Parking, parking on the streets street, which is okay, the only solution to it. Okay. There's no other solution. No, I mean, I understand there's... And you even said a few areas yes, there where are. it's challenging, but mm -hmm. I'd hate to have that across the entire. I mean, we don't have to do it across the entire city. You can well, pick the streets you want. And you're getting down real particular, but uh, I'm not. I mean, I understand the, the families that were in here last time. And I feel for them. I know they have a, a lot in their their household, and then there's other issues involved. But I'm not in favor of. Uh, uh, you know, there was one way brought up. Discussion, but uh, I'm, I'm struggling with it. Yeah, Did you guys have to go check that? Yeah, I, 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 um, I think that if we had a, if we had a, I guess a, it would have to be a survey. I suppose I'd have to see a survey. 
my inclination is this: is that it's an important, it's a, it's a state ordinance, it's a state. The sidewalk is a sidewalk is a state thing, and parking on the sidewalk is a no go. Changes to specific streets, I think, while it sounds, it sounds like it would be okay. We could do that. It seems to me you would you would end up with an issue of of for, first of all for patrol everybody that in the police everybody would have to know exactly what street it was, and it Park seems, enemy? yeah if you're you know okay so that you can enforce it, and other folks I think would begin to look at it that they may have an you know we may see other issues come up and pretty soon we could end up with a crazy <laughs> quilt of you can park here but you can't park here after two. And it seems to me that a that a one way to objectively look at it would be that if we, as we've done with other street with some other streets, if you had a situation where you could not park in your driveway, right? Because the sidewalk was so you know was so close, but you had a car you know but you you had a car in your garage but you simply could not put your car in your driveway. And you know, I've only seen it. I've only seen that in one, one instance. I don't know if the, if you can think of any others, but we'd have to do a, a legitimate survey. Then I think you know, you we may need to look at a remedy. But if you look at the very few instances where I think this has become an issue, I don't think it is because I have one car in the I have a one car garage and I have a car there, and my second car you know is is out here. I I think we have an the instance what we talked about. Which I think we'd all be sympathetic to, but you know there is a garage, um, but there's no car in it, and and I think that we are looking for a remedy for a, an issue that is not really fully an issue that you would address by changing a, a two-way street to a one-way street or designating streets around town as as you can park. Well, we do have that designation for truck traffic. Remember that went through a res uh, uh, referendum. So there are certain streets that you can't have trucks on, but there are certain streets you can. I think it was 40 streets or so. Uh, yes, and they're all properly marked. But to, to Bill's point, I, I took a little ride around some of the newer neighborhoods. Uh, Larkins Way and Lakeshore Walk are similar. It's similar size homes, similar length driveways. We don't have that problem in that area. There are no parking deficiencies, if you will. Uh, the garages are used for cars. So to, to your point, uh, I think it's it's the area that, that you know should should we go to you know something specific? Another <coughs> thought that maybe so we don't have cars parking over the sidewalks. Remove the sidewalks on that side, on one side of the street. Leave the sidewalks on another, like we've done in some areas. Would that be a solution? I don't know. I think it needs more discussion. Really, before I'm not sure that would work in that area though, because I right. think the sidewalks are the same on both sides same width, same, same distance from distance. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, if you have this lady on <coughs> the north side has a problem, or she's on the south side, and we take her sidewalks out, what about the guy on the north side that has the same issue? But does the guy on the north side have that issue? I don't know. Well, they were, well, well the potentials they were. <coughs> you can't look, you have to look at it from a broader picture, I think. Of, Whatever happens for 20 years from now, when people live there, will you have the same problem? Don't look at it as the person's problem. Look at it as a bigger problem of parking, not individuals. You have to look at it. John, you need, to, you need to build a parking deck. <laughs> in, in the neighborhood? <laughs> so I, I guess we need more discussion on it, but yes. it sounds like the solution is getting more and more towards there's really no, no answer to the question. It's just the way it is. But we can. But I guess what concerns me is, in this instance, there's four cars. So if we would make, for argument's sake, an accommodation for four cars, then the guy on another street with a driveway as long as mine has six cars. So what are you going to do for him? Mm -hmm. You know, once you start that process, it's difficult. Um, if they went all the smart cars, there would be no issue. Okay. No, no, the mayor brings driveway. up a good point. You can put three in a row. There's properties in Ward 3 that there's four cars out in the driveway, maybe more, and they have one on their side uh, parking too. That uh, they can just 
like the mayor said, they can come and say, hey, you're doing it here. Right. Right. I'm, I'm having the same issues. And they might have a bunch of kids living there and might have something in the garage that, you know, and I'm, I'm not for it myself. We, we can talk about it more. Well, that's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Figure out <laughs> what I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. All right, well, we'll discuss it again and see if, if we come up with the same answer, which it seems like we're, where we're going. Mm -hmm. Mayor, what did we, didn't we give another extension? Was it 30 yeah. days? Uh, well, we didn't put that on. Okay. For, until further notice. Okay. okay. Um, 17078 budget amendments. This is uh, hat sales. It's a pass-through, so when they make money selling the hats, we the budget money to spend it. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 1779 amending kind of ordinance 13301 association membership. Mayor? Uh, we've been paying for uh, Main Street Medina CSC as the uh, sponsor, and um, it, was, it was just caught that uh, the city is not a member. So we, we thought for the 30000 a year that, that we're giving them, um, we should have that. And then, in addition to that, um, the police department. Uh, for the same purpose is asking to uh, permit under the uh, police department property and ev evidence I'm sorry international association for property and evidence under the uh, police chief or police department the, the finance department cannot pay the membership dues without us authorizing it by ordinance what, what, and that membership with the police what does that get us what do we get a benefit of? what's the benefit I think they have trainings that, that is a um, certification for our property room expert and training is part of that. Questions? <coughs> uh, move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. A 1780 bid for the 2017 concrete pavement joint ceiling project. Patrick. Thank you. Uh, this one and the next are both our annual projects. The joint ceiling project is uh, maintenance it's, it's a pavement maintenance tool uh, this will extend the life of the pavements um, so we think it's well with it we'll do it every year question pat when will the list be available for the streets uh, by the end of this week okay because i know i get asked yeah yeah okay. i need to approve second all there all right, right. I'll opposed motion carries 1781 bid for the 2017 concrete street repair project this is the repair of uh, our concrete streets. This is the citywide uh, individual panel repair we do every year. How many panels do you think we're going to get done? Uh, we should be right around about 50,000 square foot. Um, I'd have to do a little math to figure out the actual panels there. Uh, it's, it's usually around 100 to 120 different locations. Pat, and this list will also be available mm -hmm. this week? Can yeah. you forward that to? Yeah, so we didn't look at it. And what did we spend last year? Last year we were at 300000 Okay. We ended up being like 304 or something. Okay. And that's kind of where we've been? With no, the, prior to last year we've been up near half a million. That's what I thought. Yeah. And we're reducing this down because? Some of the money from 108's now going to the street department. The street department's taking away the money. Wow, yeah. it's, it's just an uh, example of the city Ooh. starting to get a little thinner on their revenue. So that's why we need to get more projects to get more revenue. Sure, sure. <laughs> What's that proof? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? More security. 1782 expenditure of 15000 for one staff electric for the engineering. Uh, you might know Smith Road is under construction, and a big part of it was moving a lot of utility poles. Uh, that process is almost done. Uh, Ohio Edison had a tremendous amount to move, but if you remember, they have <coughs> distribution and their transmission on Smith. Uh, there's a, a, a big pole right at the corner by uh, Standard Electric, Standard Well, I'm sorry, uh, that will be moved, actually removed tomorrow. Anyhow, there's two locations, uh, standard welding and then the fair, where we are required that they're moving the poles and transferring the services, but we are, we have to transfer the service, the customer. Um, so this is the cost for Ron Path Electric to do that. There will be another one, a much smaller one for the, the fair, because the fair is just like a household connection. This one's a giant, I think 600 amp 
Is this an original contract? You just can't be covered under that? Under the road widening contract itself that was bid out with the contractor? No, this is between us and Edison. You know, Edison is doing all his work. Now, this is a customer, what they call customer based uh, responsibility. Did we know this had to happen, or is this something that popped up? We knew. To be, I didn't know it was going to be that much money, to be honest with you. Um, I thought it would be less than 10000 but this is the price we have. Is Ron the only, Ron Faf the only um, provider of this service? No, they're not, um, but they are, uh, uh, they did the original standard boiling building, they're familiar with it. Uh, they, they work with Ohio Edison, I think there's a, Okay, so we didn't have an opportunity. Well, this is less than twenty-five thousand, so we would have bid it anyway. We need to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Seventeen eighty-three. Adopt OPBA sergeant's contract. Can okay. we do them all collectively? Sure. Because because that's how we try to uh, negotiate them. So Nina worked on the Teamsters contract, and um, uh, Lieutenant Burke particularly worked on the sergeants and patrol and communication. And at the end of the day. Um, we got all four unions to agree to um, 2.5 for 2017 retroactive to the first of the year, 2.25 uh, for 2018, and 2% 2 um, for 2019. The exception there is the sergeants, <coughs> because the sergeants, although they get the benefit of those wages, theirs is either on the first year in, in the position, 6% over the top patrolman, and then an amount the next year, which had been 14%. They asked to raise that. They asked and we agreed to raise that to 15%. So we raised it 1% in exchange for them not asking for the retro. So um, it, it will not take effect until the contracts are signed. So then they lose the first almost half of, of this year. Um, the shift differential um, increased by five cents from 35 cents to 40 cents. It's not changed in the last three to four contracts, probably. Um, in the Teamsters, they asked to add $25 to the boot allowance because it had not changed um, as well for some times, although the, for, for some time, although the price of the boots have gone up. Um, hospitalization. We kept flat in 2017, all four contracts. Um, in 18 and 19, if the city's increase goes up 1% or more, then theirs goes up 1%. So the people that are paying 12% this year for taking part in wellness will go to 13, and those that don't will go from 16 to 17. And then the same thing for 2018. And the wording's a little bit convoluted if it took a the time to read it, but what what it says in essence is if there's an increase in 17, then 18 will go up to 14 and 18. Uh, if there's not an increase in 7 or in 18, then, then it won't. So it all depends on how that trickles out. Another thing we changed was um, the opt-out. Um, we, were, we were providing folks with $400 if they opted out of family insurance, which is quite a savings for the city. Uh, but the city had an interest in having those getting the opt-out pay taking part in the wellness program as well, because them being healthy is a benefit to all of us. So um, the agreement was to raise that by $25, um, $425, but that's not effective until September 1st of this year if they take part in wellness. If not, then there's an ability for us to reduce it to two hundred dollars. So, um, in other words, they get about half if they don't want to take part in the wellness. Before they were doing nothing with wellness. And then the, the last thing was um, the finance department asked, and I guess most other uh, cities are doing this. Where right now, how it, how it is is you work all of 2017 and January 1st of 2018, you get the vacation that you were credited with working the year before, uh, the preference of the finance department was to do it the same as sick time, where you get it incrementally every two weeks when you get your pay period. You get a portion of that two weeks. So basically, we took the same amounts of vacation and then divided them by the 26 to get to that ratio. 
So when you get two weeks, it's a certain percentage. When you go to three, it's a different percentage. And um, and they agreed to that. It took them a while. It took us a while to get everybody to understand. That nobody's losing here. You're, you're actually the benefit of that is a new hire. Before you would have to be here an entire year and not be able to use any vacation. Now a person can be here for six months and actually earn a week of vacation if they need to take a day or two. Um, so it helps us out. And obviously, from the city's perspective, the sooner we can pay out those vacation, the wages are lower than waiting till the next year. The next year, we still have the limits on carrying over that, that we established before, and, and those type of things. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. And then. Um, the only other uh, thing was number 15 on your agenda is to ask what we've typically done is whatever we're doing in the collective bargaining agreements to pass that on to the nine union employees. So <coughs> base, basically it's a recommendation to do the same thing. Why is the contract through October of 19? That's not two years. Right. right. So shouldn't it be December 31st? Yeah. Well, it, the contract language actually goes till then, but what it does is it starts the negotiations in October, and the hope was that then by January we can have it resolved, so that so that um, we're not getting involved in the uh, retroactive. In the retroactive, but you see how well that worked. But if we if we would have waited till December 31st to expire and, and then start, we, we would be in August or September. So. It's, it's accomplishing what we wanted to, but just just not as quickly as we would like it to. Okay, so, I mean, I, I just getting concerned if it, the effective dates are always January 1st, it's not yes, sir. Yes, sir. October or November 1st. That's when the negotiations open up. Gotcha. The wording here says it's effective through October 31st. It should be effective through December, December 31st. 31st. Right, the, but. I guess my, my question is, what, what language do we have in there covering November and December 2019? You, you don't, just like you did in November and December of 17, right. of 16. Okay. The same when, when the contract ends, we just continue to pay on what the, the last, last existing contract okay. was. So like that contract ended October 31st of 16, so in November and December, and then there wasn't a raise in January because there wasn't a new contract. So we just continued to pay on the old contract. So they never try to say, oh, we want to do November 1st, we want the raise effective November 1st. Of right, because if you look at the wage section, it always says effective January 1st of this year, then this year, then this year. Okay. So it, that's covered there. And um, th there's a, I can't recite it now off the top of my head, but there's a serve rule that as long as you're engaged in the negotiations, that the provisions of the contract will continue, and um, our attorney signs that, their attorney signs that, and then everything stays as is. Um, I mean, if things had dropped off on October, then we, we'd have officers outside the signs instead of uh, working the road right now. Thank you, questions? I'm going to have to abstain due to the sergeant's contract. So I think that's we'll do them one at a time. Yeah, we'll do them one at a time, then we'll uh, move to approve the sergeant's contract with the emergency clause. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Motion carries. Move to approve the patrolman's contract with the emergency clause. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Move to approve the communication operator's contract with the emergency clause. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? And finally, move to approve the Teamsters contract with the emergency clause. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Anybody? Okay, uh, then we got 1787, which we talked about. The, Nine union employees moved to approve and to apply the same raises in terms of employment to <coughs> the nine union employees. Second. With the emergency costs. All right. Mike, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, 1788, a cooperative purchase for a 2013 freight liner back off for the streets department. Mr. Pacoli. Thank you, Mr. President. Currently, the city has two sweepers. 
we have the 1993 the blue one that you see around town here and then the 2012 1993 obviously is 24 years old showing significant signs of wear so Bill Davis talked with uh, representative best we're looking at a 2013 <coughs> never owned never titled uh, Freightliner back all um, that price is two hundred and fifteen thousand for seven hundred fifty the 2017 would be 267,000 so uh, a couple things real brief the back all the sweep sweep streets it'll back in the catch basins as the other blue unit does however the third I guess enticing aspect is they could collect leaves and, and Thank you. we're in favor of uh, <laughs> having another addition to help in that regard so so this has never been used no it's, it's been their demo never never owned never titled has like 700 it's been hours. Used. It's, it's been their demo. How so many hours it has that? 700 hours. And that's from traveling from, basically they, they go to demonstrate it to various cities, counties, or whatever, and, and that's the time that it's had. It's actually coming to the city for a demo. Um, with the approval here, we'll go forward if, if it all pans out. So Do we pick the street we wanted the demo on? Absolutely, you can. Sounds like a good deal. So in our opinion, I mean, you know, a 2013 Freightliner versus the 2017 is 51,000 less. Again, um, this is a warrant buying the 2017. Um, we had good luck with our 2009 Freightliner that we bought. If you remember, the cabin chassis was used, and then we bought an extreme back for that last uh, leaf back, right. and it's worked well. Uh, again, we don't have to have brand new out of the manufacturer. And, and just for clarification, you, you said because it wasn't titled, then it still comes with the full manufacturer's warranty. Correct. As if it was new, right? Yes, that's in the packet. So, for how many hours does the warranty go through? It's one full year, for, I believe, if you look at the packet. Uh, because if you do, if you divide it by eight, which is about 8,000 hours on something, that's kind of when you have to do a major overhaul, I think, 8,000 hours. So it'll be 34,000. No, we do, you said, how many hours, I'm sorry, John? 8,000. For a complete overall, is that too much? Yeah, I think I mean that's half of the life of a vehicle because you get fifteen thousand hours. Um, we bring our trucks in, our garbage trucks in at hundred hours, then we bring them in at two fifty, then we bring them in at five hundred. So we're on a two hundred fifty hour um, time line. I was just wondering if fifty one thousand dollars savings for seven hundred hours is good. Well, I mean, is it worth? I would get their bang for a buck, I guess is the question. It sounds like they're And you look and it's the same unit, you know, other than 17 versus 13, so that's why we thought 13 would be beneficial. And I'm sure when they go out and demo it, they're not doing multiple streets. They're showing how the, the piece of equipment operates. And am, I, am I wrong? Or? No. I mean, that's, bring it out, they bring it to your garage, um, it may go to a, a street, there's not a vacuuming sewer line. And you've seen things backed up, so I imagine there's a lot of service departments that don't <coughs> opt to go out and have their streets clean. they just looking at the price and the, the capabilities of the vehicle. With this giving us the, the uh, leaf back, too. You know, how many hours on, on average would you put on that in a year? It varies if it's sweeping. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I don't know offhand how many hours we'll have with vacuuming the uh, catch basin. We go through uh, the city streets twice a year. That's what the anticipated target time is. Um, I can find that out. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like a, the you know, I, I hear what you're saying, John. It sounds like a pretty good deal. Good deal. I mean, it's kind of like getting a car with fairly low mileage right. or a right. lot off. Why does he ask me if it's enough off? I mean, you're, you're going to use car, right? Yeah. All the time, everybody. And so did I. Mm. Low mileage, you're good. Well, right, but I was I You're checking to see if this is low enough. Right, that is, I mean, because do with tractors, I'm just comparing the tractors and how many hours are on a tractor and what the usage is, and it's 50,000 equivalent to 700 hours. Huh? Yeah, so if you look at it as four years old, they had 200 hours a year is what they used to come on. Yep, just testing it. <laughs> <laughs> you get approved? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 1789 state bid for another. 2018 Freightliner, but this is a dump truck. So now this is for the water truck. We have 
a 2000 International, which is truck 20. It's that tandem axle uh, dump truck you see on all the water brakes. If you uh, noticed, that's out on, on every job. It owes the city nothing. It's 17 years old. It's showing significant signs of wear. Um, now this this is new. Um, I did talk with um, Brunswick Hills. If you recall, Lafayette sold. They bought two Peterbilt's 2010 model tandem axle dump trucks and sold one to Brunswick Hills. I'm not sure what the other one. Um, Brunswick Hills bought it for I believe 71,000. I've been talking to them for like six months, pushing off this purchase for whatever time. Uh, they want 80,000 for that truck. They bought it for 70. Correct. So brought it down here. Our mechanics went through it. There was a list of things that they um, were cautious about with respect to some rust. Um, this truck that Brunswick Hills has is uh, set up mainly for plowing. Their plow is not interchangeable than we have. It, it's a laid out truck with respect to plowing functions. We, we're not going to use it for plowing. We're going to use it for uh, the water department. So. Looking at the state bid, the cabin chassis is $94,000 for a brand new uh, tandem axle cabin chassis for what we're looking to buy here. The bed is $32,000. There's a $6,885 extended warranty that we're looking at. I'm not 100% convinced, but that would knock the price down even further. So the total purchase price that we're looking at is $133,000. Um, when we first started looking at these a few years ago, it was around 160000 for a new tandem axle um, dump truck. <coughs> um, again, truck 20 owes the city nothing. We've had it for 17 years. We're welcome to go look at it, but it's, it's, it's served its time. And how much money do you have saved up for this truck? We have all the, all the money. We've been pushing this purchase out for, I want to say, the last five years, if you recall in the budget. We talk about replacing 20 and it was up for replacement. But like we do all our vehicles, we take a look at, assess the equipment, and we're able to push it back, push it back, and it's to the point now where we're not going to uh, push it back. We've discussed that every year of budget, right. out, so, so you're able to do that. It's good. And again, we tried with the uh, freight liner from Brunswick Hills, and, and that didn't pan out. That's not going to be a good. It's not going to be a good uh, purchase for the city. This uh, vehicle be sitting outside out there at the water department. Is that correct? Yes. However, we do, we'll discuss it up in, upcoming in budget. We have quite a bit of money saved up now for uh, outbuilding 6,000 square feet, half of what we uh, built at the street department. So that, that'll be in the water discussions. Can't wait. Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Most carries. Last one is 1791, discussing an ordinance barring medical marijuana in the city of Medina. If you recall, six months ago, we put a moratorium on it's coming up this month um, to allow time to figure out what the state was going to do. I believe the state has determined what they wanted to do. So I guess we need an update on that and then discuss uh, why do we want to bar medical marijuana. Mr. Hubert. Mayor and I have talked a few times about what administra the administrative position ought to be with respect to medical marijuana. I think one of the primary problems with the medical marijuana law in the state of Ohio has to do with the fact that it, can't, it really has not addressed directly the fact that in, under federal law, marijuana is a scheduled prohibited drug. And although the state of Ohio has advised attorneys that if we work to set up these medical marijuana zones, we won't be in trouble ethically. Um, there's no waiver that I'm aware of from the federal government with respect to any of these issues. And as an attorney and as a prosecutor, I'm sworn to uphold the laws not only of the state of Ohio, but the United States. And, um, and it's, so it's been left to the individual judgment, apparently, because I've not been advised of any waiver from the federal government with respect to what we are doing. It hasn't happened. It just occurs that states are doing what they believe they would like to do without really addressing the federal law directly. But the fact remains that 
marijuana is a scheduled drug and it is scheduled as a prohibited drug, whether it's medical or not medical. And as a prosecutor, um, I can tell you I don't have a high view of recreational marijuana basically because it causes impairment and I see on a weekly basis the end result of what occurs with that impairment and if you look at it and you're involved with it as a prosecutor you get to the point where you have a pretty dim view of what's happening to people who are using marijuana recreationally and if the studies that are coming out now that some states are allowing medical marijuana are establishing that once a state allows medical marijuana, the recreational marijuana use goes up. And there really hasn't been much in the way of analysis to examine this or advise city councils or lawyers as to a correct direction to take in response to these issues. But the studies are starting to come out and they're not very positive if, if you, in fact, feel that being impaired by marijuana is probably not a real great thing. Um, so in my talks with Mayor Hanwell, my feeling is that until the federal government provides us with some direction on this or gives to the state or councils a waiver with respect to this law, uh, I feel bound to uphold the federal law and uh, view marijuana as a prohibited drug. And in light of that, until the federal government weighs in on this, my recommendation is that we bar medical marijuana in the city of Medina. And uh, at this point in time, I'm really not sure what the federal government is going to do. I mean, Obama administration, we were given to understand that they weren't particularly looking to enforce it too aggressively. Um, what I hear anecdotally with respect to the current administration is that they may enforce the federal law more aggressively and it's not defined. But until it is defined, uh, if, uh, after discussions with Mayor Handel, Mayor Handel, my recommendation is that we wait get some direction from the federal government on this issue. Right now, it, it is a prohibited scheduled drug, whether it's medical or not. Gotcha. Okay. I, I mean, I, I respect everything that you said, and, and, and I agree that any time the federal government could come to any of these states that either have recreational or medical marijuana and, and shut it down. They've not done so thus far, but maybe this current administration will, will do so. And the only, you know, I, I don't think I'd ever support recreational marijuana, but just in my career, I've, I've, I have seen it over the years a number of, <coughs> of uh, cancer patients that are going through chemo and the, the drugs that have been uh, prescribed to them for, for nausea and appetite enhancement has not worked. And there has been not a lot. I can't. I mean, I can't say this is a daily or weekly or monthly basis, but there has been times where, where we we've transported patients and and asked them, "Can we see the list of your medications?" And they give us the list of their medications or show us their medications. And at times, so some of them say, "And you know, you're not a police officer." I don't know, but you know, at, right after I have my chemo treatment, I I do smoke marijuana. I know it's against the law. And, you know, I always tell them I'm not judgmental. Uh, and the statistics of recreational use going up were in states that just have medical marijuana, that, that may be very accurate. I, you know, I would just hate to deny, if there's an opportunity to deny uh, people with the need for medical marijuana, there's, there's other needs besides chemo patients, but, but uh, I do respect them. And, and understand that your your stance on the, you know federally it's against the law. So. Well, I think the, to the state has come come up with uh, guidelines now, and if I remember correctly, uh, in order to be a 
uh, a grower, and there's a limited number of growers, and the permit fee for the state is uh, something like 250000 I think, just to apply for a permit. Um, and I think other cities have done, you know, started their own governance of it. If you wanted to do it in the city, there's permit fees associated with coming into the city. I don't think they're 250000 but I think there's fees associated with that. And I mean, th this is a kind of a, a it is a, a good question because federally it's prohibited, but half the country does it. There's no enforcement. So do we pass something up that could be an economic development tool in our city? And do we pass up uh, saying no to those who actually need it and use it appropriately? Because it's not recreational. That's a tough question. I mean, I've been involved in some situations where there's been sick people, cancer, that had, had the same issue. What do they do? I mean, do, uh, this is not something, again, to be very clear, this is not going in and buying weed as we see on that TV and smoke it. There's no smoking involved. These are oils that you take. So it's different. But the growing of it's the same, right? I mean, you, you got to grow it the same everywhere. There's no different ways to grow it, but I mean, you grow marijuana plants. So that's one of the aspects that will happen. It will be growing of marijuana. Uh, so, I mean, it's a, it's a tough question in my mind. I don't know. Yeah. What, are you, what are your thoughts? I, just one quick question. I have not not uh, read the, the legislation. These, this this has to have a prescription, correct? Correct. Yeah, you can't you can't get it without a prescription. And I don't know what that means. Yeah, but it's like any other drug, oxycotton. If you had an oxycotton producer, do you ban them from your city? I don't and know. I can tell you, most most physicians, except for pain management physicians, uh, orthopedic surgeons, are very limited on what they actually prescribed now for opiates so I don't but think you have abuses in that too I'm well, sure, sure you, well, obviously you do but I'm, I'm just saying I don't think this is going to if, if it the legislation would go to you know uh, pass in, in Medina that you would have a lot of your family physicians prescribing prescriptions for marijuana well the medical marijuana part of it too I guess I mean it's not you're not going to go buy weed again you're right. going to buy something to take to help you I would imagine Right. That's the whole reason it passed, I would imagine. So. I think it's an interesting issue from, you know, what, what Greg explained, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the mayor, I think, kind of separates this issue from what, what really what we're talking about into, you know, exactly what Greg explained, it's an unset this is an unsettled issue. And there is a conundrum here with, a fe you know, the federal regulation versus what the states are saying, you know, and, and people take medical marijuana and you're not going to smoke it, you're going to inhale it, it's going to be a patch, it's going to be all those things. But, but that doesn't discount that un, the unsettled part of, of, of the issue. Um, and I think we also have um, a percep there's a perception, I think, that is, that is a part of this decision that it, it brings up issues that don't you know, it's not, you don't visualize the patch, or you don't visualize, necessarily, you visualize weed and marijuana and the effects and uh, what comes out of all of, what comes out of all of that. And based on that, based on the federal state, disagree, you know, not disagreement, but just doesn't, it doesn't match up, it's oil and water. We are, uh, we are a family friendly community we are working to maintain that image and whether this would have an impact on it or not i don't know but we don't hurt ourselves in any way by taking a position i think that was recommended by the administration and then waiting for things to play out see how this plays out with the federal government i, I don't think that that's objectionable i don't think anybody would object to that i think it protects us in the short run you know, until this is a settled thing. And it will become settled. You know, it may just become legal in any form. Or someone could, it could be turned around and suddenly become the law could be enforced. So I think that would be, a, uh, you know, a, a, a solid, justifiable, and responsible <coughs> position for us to take now. Uh, I agree with you, Bill. Um, I'm, a, I'm a state's race person. I think the state does have the right to pass the laws as they wish. The federal government should stay away from things like this. However, the current law of the land, if you will, is that marijuana is a Schedule D. 
and I don't want to see the city or the state spend a lot of money in, law, in court defending <coughs> their position one way or another. Uh, we've got better things to do. We already had discussions on parking decks and other things today, <coughs> uh, Christmas lights, John, that um, are better served for our community. And I agree with Bill. I think that the moratorium, as opposed to banning, just let's just extend the moratorium that we have uh, for 12 months. Give it a chance to play out and then react accordingly. You okay with extending it? I'm okay with extending it. No, I mean, everybody's brought up good points. Um, the medical side of it, and it could be taboo to some, but you know, I've personally known somebody that has had cancer and, and used it. Uh, for uh, appetite, and you read about it too. Um, but you know, I voted for the moratorium before, just so we could align ourselves so we're protected. Um, I don't, and this is me just throwing it out. I don't know if the federal government's going to turn around and come down to Medina, Ohio, but you don't know. But uh, barring it, you know, I, I don't know if that's the direction. <coughs> I think eventually it'll be medical. I mean, if you see the trend of our country. Um, and possibly even further, but uh, I'm fine we're ex extending another six months. So that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm not, but okay. Is anybody? <laughs> well, we got six months to get the answers, and we don't have any answers. So Mark suggested six months. I suggested 12 months. Okay. What, what do you want to do, 12 months or six months? Uh, I think 12, I think we have a better chance of getting an answer if we extend it for 12 months. Oh. Oh, I don't think there'll be any answers. But, <laughs> but we have a better chance. Of <laughs> well, I think if there's answers sooner, it doesn't have to stay 12 months. We can get back together if right. something's clarified. Let me just share a couple things from an enforcement perspective with you, though, as a safety director. Officers don't have to. Officers have broad discretion in the enforcement of laws. So the examples of a cancer patient, I had somebody come to my office when we did the moratorium last time. Um, they'll tell you that the pill or the patch does not do the same thing as inhalation because it gets to the lungs and gets in their bloodstream within seconds versus ingestion and then having to be absorbed into the bloodstream through the digestive system or, or through an arm patch. Um, most officers, if they're presented with somebody that's on chemo, has documentation from the doctor, um, would likely take that into vast consideration before deciding to write them for, for something like that. Um, what we're trying to do here is the cultivation, which is something to totally broader than, than these folks that are using it. Some currently illegally now and, uh, and others uh, maybe medically prescribed. Um, so I, I just share that with you. I mean, do we have an update on the law? I mean, did you, since the state did it, do, do we have an update? I've got the uh, regulations that uh, the uh, state of Ohio came out with a couple weeks ago. Received those from Kim Marshall, which I mean, thanks. She saved me time to pull it down off of the, uh, the internet. But uh, again, my. I don't know how you simply ignore if you are sworn to uphold the law of laws in the United States. I don't know how you properly just ignore that law. And if you're going to be so marginal in terms of making an individual decision as to what law you're going to follow and what law you're going to decide you're not going to follow, then I think we're on a slippery slope and that's a major problem. I think the federal government needs to get, I don't, needs to address this issue. It creates a tremendous amount of gray area, and um, I agree with everybody in terms of what you're saying the trend is. I don't know that I agree with the trend, because again, I see the end result and consequence, a lot of the nonsense associated with impairment that goes directly to marijuana use on a regular basis. And if you look at that, it's an eye opener. But uh, well, I don't think anybody be that as it may, until the federal government 
clarifies this, I don't think it's right to simply ignore the law. <coughs> if you're going to ignore the law, then what other law are you going to rationalize and then ignore? And in talking about this with the mayor, really, how do you ignore this law? They need to address this so that, that, that there's clarity for government entities attempting to, to uh, uh, handle the matter. Frankly, the state of Ohio, if you look at it logically, they were under pressure from the marijuana lobby and a lot of money being put into it to uh, face off against constitutional amendments, again, none of which address the federal law. It, in direct response to that pressure, they passed this legislation, but, but notably put in the legislation, well, local entities can decide they don't want to have it at all, essentially creating a green light for local entities to avoid the problem of, with respect to the federal law by simply barring it. You can do that under this state law with no problem whatsoever. So the issue as to where we go with the state law has been wholly unaddressed. And again, if I'm going to raise my hand and swear as a prosecutor and as a law director to uphold the laws of the United States, I feel that I can't personally just decide not to follow that law because it, it is a scheduled drug abuse, whether it's medical or not. And nobody has provided a waiver or an exemption from the federal government with respect to this issue. And so at this point, uh, after discussing it with Mayor Hamlow, we thought administratively uh, we simply don't get into this arena until we get direction from the federal government. Well, do we need to have another request? Because we're requesting to bar it. We can modify it. To, I mean, what does everybody want to do? Everybody's okay with a moratorium. How long? Uh, Paul wants a year. I mean, I brought up six months. I'm fine with a year. Yeah, year's fine. A year's fine. I mean, the mayor. Could there be less? Yeah. Yeah. What are we gaining by the moratorium? I, I mean, in Nothing. the end, That's in the I end, no. <laughs> do we seriously think that we're going to allow cultivators in the city of Medina? No. Well, there's one that called her. Why? Why? I, I guess I'm changing my opinion on this. If we're not going to allow it in the future, well, why even ask for a moratorium? Why not just bar it right now? Well, you're, you, there's two different things. You're talking about the cultivation of it. I don't think we have the facilities in the city of Medina to, to cultivate it. Oh, no, we well, I reread this. <laughs> huh? We've already got phone calls. That they're yeah. happy to put the money in and build. Right. I, I'm rereading this. I, I don't know that we're banning, barring the use of it because that's already illegal. The original resolution was a moratorium on issuing building permits and, and occupancy permits for buildings and structures. So if we have no intention of ever allowing this in the city limits. Well, I shouldn't say I wouldn't vote to, to allow it. If the federal government changed their <coughs> stance, which they could do, the, the, the president and Congress could come out and say, we're going to, we want every state to uphold the law that is the federal law, like Mr. Huber is saying. That can happen in the next year. Stranger things have happened in a, recently. So, I mean, I, that that could happen. Or they could say, you know what, we're going to relax that. We're going to. I think in law. discussion with, with Mayor Hanwell and step in, Dennis, if I'm wrong on this, but the uh, bar we were, he and I were discussing was going to be contingent on uh, being lifted if the federal, federal government acts on this. And if we pass the bar, if we, if we say we're going to bar it, you could come back, any council could come back even right. next year or right. you know, next, month. next month and say, oh, you know what, we changed our mind. You know, we don't want to do that. I mean, we're talking about a moratorium for six months or moratorium for 12. We're barring it. We can change that anytime we want it. You know, so, I, you know, you, you, we can vote tonight and bar it. And then we can see how things come come out and, and come back and change it. Or not. Into our favor. So we are more trying to bar you. And uh, well, just one clarification question. We are, by Greg, by by the, this state law here, we are allowed to bar it. That's correct. Okay. So. So what do you guys want to do? More term or bar? Mark. More term. I don't care. 
<laughs> we're going to have to come back. Yeah, we're going to change it anyhow. Yeah, let's <laughs> borrow it. You know, but to me, did I just hear Mark say he didn't care? <laughs> well, to me, I mean, if it, if it's passed at the federal level, I mean, I know it's at the state, and we have, I mean, we have uh, some of the gross lettuce over in the industrial area. Right. I mean, if this is allowed to grow for medical use, I mean, are we going to say no to an entrepreneur? That comes in. Is that our stance here? We're going to say no that's to an entrepreneur. That's what we're saying. Yeah. That comes in. That's going to be able to produce a legal product. That, well, that's our stance now, though, John, because of the federal uh, mm. prohibition. But, down, but we have half the states in the country that are doing it, and, and the federal government is never going to change the law. They're just going to let it happen because they, they don't want it. They're not going to touch it. We know yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'm with Greg. You know. You, you all take the same oath that we take, so. Yep, that's right, we are. <laughs> so, so what do you guys want to do, ban it or moratorium? Uh, I propose as this is written here. We're not voting on it tonight, though, right? This they discussion. want to vote on it tonight. Uh, we're going to do this discussion. Well, we could, well, when's the moratorium on? Mr. President, just so. Next week, the moratorium's on. Just yes, so sir. that you, everybody understands that the push right now for the people that want to cultivate it they, they're knocking on the doors of the different cities to see who will allow them to come in because they have to apply for the permit if they want to be either a large cultivator or a small <coughs> cultivator. The state's only going to allow a certain number of those. I think it's like 12 large, 12 small. And those permit applications have to be filed by the end of June. So if all, the question in my mind is if all those permits are taken, Right? Then it doesn't really matter yeah, right. what you guys decide to do because it will all go to somewhere else anyway. Right. So the other question is will the federal government take the, this as a controlled substance off of the Act of 1970? There's three legislators at the federal level that have filed to do so. So, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying one way or the other, I'm just giving the information. Sure. And we've had two calls wanting to do cultivation. All right, so which direction do you, does council want to take? Mm. It sounds like barring. You got two barring? 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 I'm good. All right. I was going to go for moratorium, but I'll go for barring. So it's 4 3 for barring for the past. Okay, uh, maybe a motion? For barring him? Yes. With an emergency. It's a motion then to uh, bar the cultivation of marijuana in the city of Medina with the emergency fund. Is it just the cultivation? Or think medical. All right, let's get the medical in there. This right. is the biggest medical. Right. Medical marijuana. Right. Right. Medical marijuana. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 All right, anything else to come before finance? Hearing none, we're adjourned.